So we are live, and hi everyone. This is Echo. Welcome back to another episode of I Chongqing's channel. This channel mainly promote the communication between Chongqing and the world. Chongqing is a mega city in southwestern China with over 30 million population in 38 districts.、Um, This city's GDP reached 440 billion in 2021, and it has a Liangjiang New Area as the third national development and open zone in China. The other two is in Shanghai and Tianjin.、Um, I'm sharing this information because what we are trying to do on this channel is to、um, create a more authentic. An indi- indigenous and uh, multi-dimensional uh, narrative of Chongqing in China, with real experience and insights from individuals、um, with us. So, if you want to find out more, please like, share, subscribe to、uh, support us. Okay.、Um, let's see. In this episode today, we are going to talk about China's green transportation. Joining us today are our friend Fernando. His channel is Fromube, and Paul. His channel is called Walk About Rojo. It's always been a pleasure to invite these brilliant content creators to live stream with me because they they've been living in China for years, and I'm really ex- interested in what they are going to share with us today. You know,、mm-hmm. we know that the world is facing severe challenge of climate change and energy structure imbalance. Many countries and regions are putting effort on the building a greener society, including China. As a developing country, China not only just pledged on the Paris Agreement, made a commitment of peak its carbon dioxide emission before twenty twenty thirty. And、uh, reach the net zero emission before 2060. But also, more importantly, and this was quoted from President Xi Jinping,、um, China attaches high importance to addressing climate change is not at others' request, but on China's own initiative. It is what China needs to do to achieve sustainable development at home, as well as to fulfill its due obligation to build a community with a shared future for mankind. So today, what we are going to discuss are some real examples about how this country is implementing policies to promote the green transportation and how people will benefit from them. Therefore, we can further expect expect what to improve in this field of China because we believe this topic is deeply related to everyone's life. And China's action does affect how we shape our world more sustainable.、Um, so. I'm now wanted to ask our guest Fernando at first, and、mm-hmm. to introduce、uh, your, you know, situation right now, and what specific、uh, example are you going to share with us? Because we know you are on the amazing van trip, you know, on the、mm-hmm. road and heading to Anhui Province in China these days. So tell us a little bit more about where you are. And- well.、Um- First of all, thank you, Aiko and Ai Chongqing, for inviting me to join this discussion.、Um, it's、um, it's a pleasure to join you and Paul once again. I would like to start by first saying Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Yeah.、Uh, today is Mother's Day here in China. We're a little bit ahead of time with some parts of the world, but Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And well, we're talking about the environment, about Mother Earth. So again, I think it's fitting. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what you see behind me. What you see behind me is a、um, highway、uh, filling station or service station.、Mm-hmm. The reason why I'm here is because for the next two years, I'm going to be traveling around China,、uh, creating content about different cultural things, and I'm doing it in an RV. But this RV is being towed by my electric vehicle, so、wow. it's.、Uh, It's quite fitting to what we're talking about today because it, traveling around China with an electric vehicle、um, will put some challenges and put the the network <laughs> of charging stations and swapping stations and all these、uh, to the test.、Um, I have some experience in 2021. I did a almost like an 8,000 kilometer trip. 
um, from uh, Guangdong all the way to the northwest of China, Qinghai, uh, in my EV as well. And right now we are going from, again, from Guangdong all the way to the north in the EV. So mm. basically we are relying on the charging stations along the highways and it, some swapping mm -hmm. stations or charging stations in different cities where we stop. Okay, I have a question. So, um, does this uh, charging station do you think is the biggest challenge? The the charging facilities, the infrastructure, like the biggest challenge on the road when you are like driving the um, in the EV. For for regular people, no. If you have a regular EV car and you're on the highway, there's a there's a charging station every fifty kilometers, every eighty kilometers. Now, uh, for us, um, it's a little bit different because our car has a battery, uh, a 100 kilowatt battery that gives us a standard range of about 600 kilometers. But we oh. are towing a um, 1.5 ton trailer. So that reduces our range uh, almost in half. So mm -hmm. instead of those 600 kilometers, we get to drive only 300. So when we are not on the highway, our our anxiety is a little bit like ooh, but once we're on the highway is is very safe. So this is why we prefer to. Our way of traveling right now is we move from one RV camp to another, and we do that going on the highways. Once we get to an RV camp, we detach the trailer, and then we drive around our our SUV, electric SUV, anywhere we want in the in the city in the countryside, because then we have our full range in the car. Uh, so that's our strategy. That's our methodology of travel. So when we are not on the highway, there is a little bit of, um, but that's very specific to what we are doing, not for regular people on any kind of electric vehicle. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's worked out pretty well. We haven't had any situations where, where we struggle or we're stranded. Um, we know that when we are going uphill, towing the RV, it's it's demanding <laughs> we climbed about 15 kilometers and we lost wow. 100 kilometers of battery mm -hmm. so that's the thing that's why we prefer traveling on highways because even if you have a a hill the highways yeah. in china are so developed that the, the gradient is not that much so and you are not winding up and down, so you have more inertia. You is more more efficient. So that's my experience. But uh, we can talk a lot more um, a little bit later. But if you want to know more about this particular trip, you can visit my my channel called "Are We There Yet?" the YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, Fernando has two channels. Not only in this one, the the other one, Are We There Yeah, is always really mm -hmm. fantastic with his road trip experience. And uh, let me show you guys some picture that he just sent it to us. You know, this mm -hmm. one. You, yeah, he is this live is streaming where we are right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, see that uh, uh, an EV is pulling his trailer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yep. really amazing. So they mm. in china um which city has the most has the most um you know the camping you know the ev camping station like you mentioned um well what i've have learned because i've only been doing it since january is that the north of china and the northwest of china they're a lot more um into uh RVing mm -hmm. and camping and there's a lot more mm -hmm. infrastructure um uh, because there's winter over there, there's wow. a snow. So during winter, people like to travel down and, and, and enjoy their, their time in a warmer place. Um, mm -hmm. In the south where we live, it's not that developed. Um, we, we struggle a little bit. For example, today, the next RV uh, camp is about a thousand kilometers. So it's going to mm. take us about two or three days to get there. So we need to spend the night in a service station but a service station as you just saw in that picture i can charge my car <laughs> it's got no problem and i sleep on the trailer and that's it so it's all very simple the only thing that's uh, that's a challenge is um water so we have a big mm -hmm. enough water that lasts us for three or four days and that's mm -hmm. how we can make these long long journeys but once we hit the north 
there's there's RV parks and camping places all over the place. The one that we're going to right now in, in Anhui is really, really special because it's it's a service station and it's kind of like a competition uh, <laughs> between different service stations. They become tourist destinations. It, it, ah. it, there's, there's one that has like um, the ceiling is painted like the sky, like in, in Macau, in the, the Venetian. Uh, there is waterways. There is futuristic... I mean, I've been going from service station to service station for the last few months, <laughs> and uh, it's really interesting to experience them, and uh, it's uh, it's very very unique uh, this this way of traveling. But um, yeah, in terms of the infrastructure, we are seeing that it's totally possible to do it, totally feasible. Um, the western side of China is a little bit less developed. But I just received information from my car manufacturer, from my, my brand, that they're developing um, tra um, swapping stations and charging stations all the yeah. way to Tibet, yeah. which yeah. is pretty, pretty yeah. interesting, pretty cool. So yeah. it's, um, it's growing, it's developing, and, and uh, it's, it's the future. I mean, China is really pushing forward for this, and uh, we, we get to enjoy it. Thank you, Fernando. And uh, mm -hmm. and you talk about the you know battery swapping. I just did a swapping station live stream last month in Chongqing, mm -hmm. and as far as I know, we have applied those battery swapping station battery battery swapping vehicles in in Chongqing more and more. Mm -hmm. I would say, and so I'm I'm gonna show you guys some videos about it. About I think those swapping process is really fast it only takes one minute yeah and yes. uh we are going to introduce our another guest for all of us paul today what are you going to talk with us share with us paul and we know we i've watched your video you know i've watched your video with the new vehicle the new electric vehicle it's really awesome we saw we, we watched you when camping with it driving uh -huh. on the street with it and uh um, are you going to talk with us about the electric vehicle? Because we can tell from your content that you are truly a, an electric vehicle lover, right? Well, let, let me clarify that. Um, if, if you watch the <laughs> if you watch the vehicle, it's it's not quite a hundred percent electrical vehicle. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I am a fan of is learning about the diff the varieties, the different approaches to electric vehicles that China is uh, taking on. It's not mm -hmm. just pure electric. There's plug-in electric. There's the plug-in hybrids. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, of course, with like Fernando's, you have the battery swap technology, which is actually growing a lot faster than I anticipated it would. So to be witness to this in China is really a privilege and a treat because, you know, I'm from America and in America, it's either pure power gas or diesel or pure electric with the Teslas. Where, as I see in China, there's a lot of different uh, things being developed, a lot of new ideas being tried and, and developed in the marketplace itself. And that's really exciting to watch it mature and to see which one actually uh, will, I don't want to say dominate the marketplace, but will become more the norm. And uh, with the one that I drove was the Li Xiang, and it's a plug-in hybrid vehicle. It's an electric car with a range extender on it. And that uh, you can charge it. It'll give you about, a, I think it's like 100, 100 kilometers of range, which is perfect for day-to-day -day driving. And I did that uh, just going about my life. But, you know, when you're out on the road trip or something like that, and uh, you come across a, uh, a service station like Fernando is in, uh, there are typically at least four chargers there. And you can get in, you can charge it for an hour or so, and walk around and have a little break from your drive. But if you're on a long road trip during a holiday, you're going to be waiting a little bit longer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it, it, it's, a, it's nice to have an option to where you can just go to the filling station, fill up, and the combined uh, electric with traditional gas will give you uh, about a thousand kilometer range. And it really eliminates the range anxiety that a lot of people, especially early adopters of electric cars, have. And that's one of the benefits that I saw within the Li Xiang and why I gave it such high praise as opposed to a Tesla 
or a pure electric car like a Xiaopeng or something like that. So, uh, so I wanted to clarify clarify that I am on record saying that I'm not 100% sold on 100% electric yet <laughs> in this current market, simply because the infrastructure is to to support it is still being built. As as Fernando you said, it's still being built, and yeah. for an average guy like me, I'm just a regular Joe who want to enjoy my life and use a car as a tool to do that. Uh, I find that the plug-in hybrid. A model is best for my lifestyle. That doesn't mean it's best for everyone's lifestyle, but I love the variety of choices there are in China that you can pick the model that best suits you. It's not pure gas or pure electric. It's everything in between. And I think that's a very special thing. And we are all privileged to see it work out and play out right now. This is a very exciting time in the auto market as well as into the near future. So that's I just wanted to clarify that on my channel. <laughs> I, okay. and, and, to be, yeah. and, and just so you guys know, I actually drive uh, a 10 year old Havel gas powered five speed manual car <laughs> and mm -hmm. I love it to death. But uh, man, <laughs> I think if I could have any car, I would choose that that least young. They're they're fantastic vehicles. <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of amazing things. And by the way, the new Neos that came with the ET7, I, I got to go for a ride in that. I didn't get to drive it, but I got to go for a ride on it. Man, there's a exciting I, things happening in this market. I, I have to, I have to uh, perhaps mention something about um, this swapping stations because the model that was developed here in China is very mm -hmm. different from from any other countries. Um, mm. If you think about Tesla in the United States, uh, Elon Musk came out with the Roadster, which was a very expensive car. And that kind of like paved the way for less expensive cars. And now you have a Model 3 that's relatively affordable, uh, very comparable to other, to other sedans or, or nice cars in China. What happened in China was it's very difficult when you want to create the infrastructure, when you want to build all the chargers, but there's no demand then nobody's going to adopt it, right? Is is the what's right. going to be first, the, the infrastructure or, or the cars on the road? So the way it was approached in China was, look, let's just jump in. Let's make public transportation electric so the demand is there. So that actually gave a lot of people uh, the opportunity to see infrastructure being developed and start to trust the transition uh, more and more um, early early adopters as Paul was mentioning we're really really happy to receive a lot of subsidies um, <laughs> in 2019 people were getting 60,000 50,000 that's about ten thousand uh, dollars subsidies from the government to get EVs I bought my car uh, in this, and I got it on January 1st, 2020, and I received about $3,500, 20,000 RMB uh, subsidy. Uh, but because I was one of the early adopters, and this is something that I would like to share with you, again, it's very specific to my case and to my company, um, I get offered free swapping of my battery for life. So wow. these trips, these trips that I'm doing, um, when I'm on the highway, I need to pay a little bit for charging. But when I'm not on the highway, when I'm just traveling around, I can swap my batteries for free. So I'm, I'm <laughs> That's doing amazing. this trip <laughs> almost for Don't free. Don't make Paul more jealous. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, He's you are. Pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already <laughs> unhappy about and this. Here's another, here's another <laughs> interesting yeah. thing. These, these early adopters, for example, if... I just drive this car until the wheels fall off, right? Let's say after five years, it's click, 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 click. Well, I can mm -hmm. get another Neo, a brand new Neo, and this lifetime offer is extended to that new car that I buy. Wow. I mean, wow. basically, wow. Uh, I mean, it's brand loyalty, right? Why am I going right. to buy any other <laughs> brand right. when I can yeah. drive this for free for the rest of my yeah. life? I can brand a Neo for the, I can drive a Neo for the rest mm -hmm. of my life. So it's a very mm -hmm. smart strategy and, and yeah. it doesn't take a genius to take that opportunity. Um, yeah. But you can see the, the second thing that I wanted to mention is that 
this growth in, in this particular business model of swapping stations, there are about 917 swapping stations um, all over the country. That's quite a lot of swapping stations. And their target for, for NEO, the company that, that the car that I have, Our is that by 2025, taxes. they want to have um, uh, 600 new swapping stations each year. That's yeah. what they want to reach. They want to reach that level. So that's going to make life for people very convenient. That anxiety and that idea, oh, I have to wait for a very long time to, to charge my car um, is going to be non-existent because a swapping of batteries takes about three minutes. It's yeah. interesting that um, Tesla actually wanted to develop, started developing this, this swapping of battery business model, but mm -hmm. the idea was dropped and yeah. they went with the superchargers in America and all over the world, superchargers. But Neo took that idea, and uh, right now they're they're going for it, and mm. uh, I'm very very happy to will be able to enjoy driving around the country for free. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I think it remains to be seen which model will actually be I don't want to say dominant, but actually will be more commonplace in the future. And Neo mm -hmm. has been investing a lot of capital into this idea, and I think when you have other car companies license this idea and it's not just the neo cars but you can have a chang'an or a you know a, a geely BYD. and also yeah byd and and so charge uh, battery swapping stations will become ubiquitous uh, across the different brands that that is something that could happen in the future really the other model of course being superchargers and and, and and extended range and it's not going to be the future or is it going to be something like your iphone where you put it on a wireless charging and then when you drive down the highway you know the highway itself will be a wireless charging uh, idea mm. so i mean they're working on wow. that technology too there's lots of great wow. stuff coming out here wow yeah wow. there's there's something uh, to say about the um, the development of evs in china um I'm not a hundred percent sure my memory, I'm getting old, but I think that <laughs> from 2025, there will be no more ICE manufactured in China. It's something like that. I don't know if it's 2025, 2030, but there is already a date in which no more internal combustion engine vehicles will be manufactured in China. Different. The, like, the answer is date. The different mod, different, different brands have announced those as a goal. Uh, I, I don't know if it's an actual thing across, you know, the country mm -hmm. itself, but mm -hmm. I know different models have announced that, such as I think Volvo has announced 2025 and yeah. um, GM for their, their further down the line. But I also before we move on to the next topic, I'll go, I want to say something. Fernando, what Fernando is doing right now is really he's a pioneer in what he's trying mm -hmm. to do right now. Uh, we, we talked we've chatted a lot about this, uh, the, the living in an RV, traveling RV. This lifestyle is really still in its infancy in China, and it is exploding. Mm -hmm. We talked about the numbers of the not only the sales, tenting, camping. It's 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 a uh, it's really growing here. And I talked to you about my students who, you know, two years ago they all want to move to a big city. Now, when you survey them, they all want to live in the countryside. You know, they want to live this this more green lifestyle. This is the younger generation coming up. I look at my folks. My parents are retired Americans, right? My mother drives a Tesla. She has a Model 3. On their house, they have a solar array that charges their house and their car. They're very, very green. But at the same time, they also have a gigantic RV trailer that's about five times bigger than yours, and it's pulled by a giant F-350 Ford diesel with the most amazing... <laughs> <laughs> and they tow that all yeah they tow that all around uh, north america so what what fernando is doing is he's combining this this rv lifestyle this this traveling with the ev concept and this is something that people can look to fernando and see how is it going how is it doing what are the pitfalls what are the benefits of it and other countries, especially in like North America, where the RV lifestyle is very matured, will look to that and say, wow, we can adopt this ourselves. It's it's something that people are looking at and saying, 
it's if they can do it here, we can do it here. We can do it in Europe. We can do it all around the world. And uh, it's something I applaud you for doing, man. I really do. And again, you're well, living I, my dream, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I thought long and hard about how to do this. And, and mm. I looked at the development and I looked at all the maps and all the the different charging stations and all these things are like, okay, this is why I designed my, I mean, my, my, my trip is, is going to last two years. And I started on the East coast of China because it's much more developed and because of the news and the information about the West going to be developed um, very soon, but it's just not ready yet. Uh, going to Yunnan, for example, mm. is a bit of a stretch. Going to Tibet is a bit of a stretch. Going to, as I said, in 2021, I went all the way to Qinghai, yeah. uh, but to get from Qinghai to to um, uh, Xinjiang, for example, Kashgar, it, it's the size of a fifth the size but of even, Europe. But even in the middle of the desert, when you were in Qinghai, there was a van, oh, yeah. a charging van waiting for you on the side of the road when you almost ran out, waving you down. Hey, how's it going? It's a charge you up so that's, you can keep going. That's, I mean, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a milking thing. car. That's a milking car. That, but that's kind of like self-defeating the whole idea. It's basically, it's a van that if you run out of battery somewhere, mm. right, you just yeah. dial up a number and they show up within 20 right. minutes, 30 minutes or whatever, and they give you enough charge, 90% uh, of your battery, uh, with a huge generator that they carry in the in the van. A lot of people say, like, that's so stupid. You are using a generator to power and... But people have to understand that that's for emergencies only. Uh, okay, uh, it's yeah. not like that's what you do all the time. You actually have to be like 200 or 300 kilometers away from your city where you've registered your car to be able to use that service. It's not like, oh, come to my house and charge. No, you have yeah. to be traveling and you have to be in a situation where it's an emergency. But but yeah, basically, we we're going to Qinghai. There was a very long stretch of, of of road in the middle of the desert. Mm. I mean, left, right, front, behind you, there's nothing but sand in Qinghai. And we knew that 50 kilometers in front of us, there was going to be the van to give us some juice and we could continue our trip. Um, that was the special. But ideally, that won't be necessary in the future. It's just right. And I'll, I'll piggy, let me piggyback on that real quick because uh, I've told this story before. Um, and because you, you mentioned, oh, OK, it's, it's a, a generator to charge a battery. You know, the, the pollution is still there. And of course, everybody knows that. OK, but here's the difference. Uh, I was in Hanoi, Vietnam, enjoying a holiday. And uh, it's there's nothing electric there. There's no electric bikes or anything. It's very loud. It's very the air is very polluted. Uh, great country. Loved it. I had a great time, but it hurt my throat as I was riding my mm -hmm. little motorbike all around the town and out into the countryside. And I remember I flew back to Hong Kong, came over on the boat to Zhuhai. As soon as I got off the boat, it was quiet. The air was clean. I was so happy to be back mm -hmm. because all the cars, all the buses, all the taxi cabs, all the motorbikes, they're all electric. And mm -hmm. the pollution is no longer in the cities. It's not where the people are living. It's 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 someplace else. It's developed from a multitude of different places, whether it be solar, wind, hydroelectric, of course, here in China, nuclear, and of course, coal. But those are things that are, it's, it's a work in progress. It's not gonna flip a switch and go all green overnight, but it's a process. And I think it was a really cool thing to see that I, it was just quiet and peaceful and the air was clean. I have to, I can't tell you how wonderful the difference was. It was so noticeable when I came back. And so I do appreciate that about living where I live. <laughs> well, um, one, one thing that I wanted to, to, oh. <laughs> to mention before, before we move on to the next topic is um, right now there is um, a brand called BYD that mm. actually makes a, a, a cable that can actually power your RV. So you can have your battery in your car powering the air conditioner and the, the stove and whatever in your yeah. RV. Uh, they sell that for this car, but it's not, uh, 
is not legit. So uh, I, I'm not going. Oh, that they, way. they all but, they, they all have this this capability, and it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, definitely. Yeah, you're, you have you're a lead acid battery. battery array in your in your RV, but man, mm. the technology is just getting to the point where it's all just going to be one <laughs> big charging. Thing. <laughs> all and, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, um, I want to show this picture because uh, I think this EV uh, electric vehicle topic is really, you know, really, you know, there are more for us to talk about. And I'm really interested in, about your insights about this because um, look at this picture, you know, this one is charging slowly, right? You, you are going to charge this for No, no, no. This is night, a fast right? charger. This is a fast, fast charger. charger? Mm -hmm. Fast chargers. Okay. This is um, this is the what is called the state grid. It costs oh. about uh, 1.2 RMB per kilowatt. So oh. a full charge from zero to a hundred would cost me about a hundred and twenty RMB more or less, <laughs> which yeah. is really nothing uh, for but... six hundred kilometers. A hundred and twenty mm -hmm. RMB is what like twenty dollars more or less. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, 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 it charges about 35 minutes from zero to 100, about 35 minutes. Oh, yeah. uh, I but basically, I, I just I just pulled over here to top up my battery because I'm going to continue traveling tomorrow. So after I'm done here with the live stream, I just go park over there. Oh, look at that truck. I'm going to park over <laughs> there and uh, have a good nap, have a good sleep. Sorry. And uh, tomorrow morning, I keep on traveling. Mm. I got 900 kilometers ahead yeah. of me. <laughs> um, what I'm trying to add here is is because um, when we talk about the swapping station, you know, this picture is me like, yeah, why it doesn't oh, show on the screen? There it yeah, is. this picture is mm -hmm. a, like a taxi coming out from the swapping station. It's already so as you as you guys said, it's all it's mostly for uh, hail, ta uh, car hailings and taxis in Chongqing and in other cities in China. And I I, I, I want to know, um, and I want to ask Paul, because because I know you have the engineer background. Um, <laughs> is it true that the swapping station will benefit the power grid? Because they said when you slowly charge in those batteries, it will, uh, you know, rearrange those powers more efficiently, more scientifically. Hmm. It benefits the power grid to the nation, national national power grid, I think. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm a, uh, I have a civil engineering background. So civil engineering, like bridges and things like this, but, uh, but I have heard that. Yeah. Um, I don't know the, the, the science behind that. I think, uh, Fernando with your, with your background and your experiences, I know you've researched this quite a bit. Maybe he would be better suited to answer that question than me. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> you, well, basically, basically every battery will degrade. So the longer you use it, the, the, the faster it will degrade. So one of the ways to prevent that is to not charge the battery to 100%. So if you charge your batteries to 90, 95%, um, you're actually protecting the battery and extending mm. its life. Yeah. Now, there's a very interesting thing because I had my car, I had free swapping since I bought my car. But I went for two years without swapping my battery because my mind, my idea was I just have a brand new battery. I don't know what kind of batteries are in this pool of, of batteries that everybody's swapping, right? Because once I give my battery, mm -hmm. I get somebody else's battery, right? Or, right? or just a battery that's in this pool. So you don't know what battery you're going to get. What if you get a bad, a bad battery, a battery mm -hmm. that's faulty? Swap again. Mm -hmm. Is that simple? <laughs> but here's an interesting thing. Oh, so what's going to happen when all these batteries begin to degrade? When all these batteries begin to have a very short life, a short range? And I explain it to people that this is a little bit like keeping fresh produce at a supermarket. You're constantly changing uh the vegetables and the fruits to to bring the fresh ones so all that neo has to do is make sure that the the batteries are in good shape and those that need uh, maintenance or that are no longer performing they are removed and they are disposed of properly and mm. this becomes 
this whole business model is, is known as battery as a service. So today people buy a car, relatively cheap, and they buy a contract. They, they get into a contract in which they rent the batteries. Mm -hmm. So it makes getting into the electric vehicles a lot cheaper. And you can, for example, just to give you an idea, something to the, I bought my car with a 70 kilowatt battery that gave me 420 kilometers range. Because of this trip, I felt that's not going to work. Well, Neo has an option. They said like, oh, you can upgrade to a 100 kilowatt battery that gives you 600 and something, something kilometers. And you can rent it for a year. So I paid $1,200 to rent a longer range battery for a year. Uh, so you know what I mean? If if I if I need for example, if I'm going to travel from Guangdong to Beijing, I could just swap hundred kilowatt batteries all the way to Beijing, and once I get to my destination, go back to my original seventy kilowatt battery. So there's so many options for people to solve their needs and to to meet their their requirements of travel and driving. With, right. with this swapping of batteries. So the, the, the question that Aiko was asking was, this is low charging, um, does it protect the batteries? It does. Not only does low charging, but the not fully charging the battery. That's, that's another key thing. Mm. So when you get a swap battery, you're getting it about an 85% battery is what you're saying. No, I get 93, 93%. 93, 93, okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. They, they go for the sweep spot. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Yeah. Actually, uh, what I was refers, uh, referred to is, uh, it, does it, you know, better to using the battery swap, swapping battery, does it, you know, benefit the national power grid because when you slowly charge it, um, but uh, when you slowly charge these batteries, uh, you will be the, the nation the, or the city, the government, um, the power station, electric power station, they will arrange the power more efficiently, more scientifically. That's my question. But but your answer is really is also important because this uh, really just address another issues about the batteries in an EV car because um, because I did the live live stream of the battery swapping station, I uh, get some information about how they are dealing with those batteries because um, they are really some really precious metals in metals mm -hmm. in the battery. So these batteries will be really recycled. Uh, they will they are industries, they are um, enterprises. They collect those used up uh, batteries all together yeah. and reuse them into the whole industry. So I think this one is also another topic about the green transportation, about the EV uh, electric uh, vehicle industry. I, I, I think this one is more is really interesting. And we have some comments in our comments area. A lot of people are discussing this topic with us right now, and we are ignoring them um, as far <laughs> as how we, we talked that I heard, I, I watched those comments and I saw somebody is, you know, driving to, to craving to watch the video and wanted, uh, of course, new car and wanted to see this car. So I'm gonna, you know, display this video of Paul's new car. Is right, this and I, I'll, yeah, I'll talk about it. Oh, no, oh, not, not that one. That's that's it. That's, not that's, that one. Yeah. that's the other one. Yeah. So uh, SUV, the good folks with at the range extending uh, power generator in it, giving it about 800 kilometers. And yes, that's true. I'm getting about 800 kilometers with a full tank of gas and a full charge battery out of this. It is a truly remarkable piece of engineering and technology. And it is by far one of the best cars I have ever driven, especially at its price point.
my secret spot. Really? Yeah, I love coming here. There's some areas where we can hang out and do like barbecue. Here? That's yeah, what I was thinking. It's pretty, it's pretty flat. That's good? Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you. All for right. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but uh, okay. that, that, so nice. that video, I just want to explain what happened there. The the folks at Li Xiang um, actually reached out to me and asked me. They gave me that car for two weeks, and they said, "Hey, they they gave no instructions. You know, I don't do sponsored content on my channel. They nobody pays me to do anything. Everything's finance money. But they they gave me this car, and they the only instructions were live with it." That was all they told me to do. Was they didn't they didn't tell me they wanted videos made or anything. They said, Paul, live with it. Tell us what you think. And I made these videos. And I lived my daily life with this car, going to work, fighting traffic, you know, take taking the girlfriend out to dinner, going camping and hiking and everything. And uh, it really opened my eyes to uh, what's happening in in this world. So uh, thank you for for playing. <laughs> uh, sorry, the, the 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 volume was a little high on that. But if you want, you can watch the whole. I got it's a two part series. It's on Billy Billy too, so you can watch it there as well. <laughs> okay, since we put you on the you know the biggest camera, you can you know starting from your side and sh starting to share, you know what you are going to share with us today. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, as far as the videos go. Oh no! I just, uh, you know, I took off the video. The video's not playing. I just said uh, since we put you on the on the screen, so you probably would, may want to share with us your ex ex examples about the green transportations and starting oh, well, from you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so my my channel is called Walkabout. Let's walk about Rojo. Rojo is the Spanish for red. Uh, I have red hair, so it just happens, you know. <laughs> uh, but walkabout is a spirit. It, it comes from the indigenous people in Australia. They would go on walkabout in adolescence, uh, basically go into the woods and discover themselves. And uh, so it's 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 an homage to them and to the spirit of discovery. And my during my time here in China, uh, I it's all about discovery. And one of the things I've discovered and happy to discover is the automobile industry. And that's what I have been doing. Uh, I discover hotels, I discover hiking and the things that I love to do. And one of the things is the automobile market here in China, which is just, it's, it, we're really privileged to see what's going on here in China in this, in this <laughs> day and age. And in fact, uh, I hope to come to Chongqing, to the Chongqing Auto Show in three weeks. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chongqing Auto Show three weeks yeah. in 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 uh, in June, right? Next week. Yeah, it begins Next at time. the end of May and goes into bleeds in the first week of June. But I hope to come out and see you some of the. Come? Every time yeah, I'm trying to get there, I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm a mm -hmm. university lecturer, so uh, uh, this time in China it's very difficult to travel as a teacher. You have to get a layers of approvals. Mm -hmm. um for for safety reasons you know so um i'm in the process of doing that so i hope to be out there to see some of the newer products and lee xiang is going to be out there neo's going to be out there with the et7 uh has got some amazing things i got a new suv uh as well but uh i'm really excited for lee xiang l9 which is coming out too so um, i i, I have a short happening. short question for this panel which is the um the ev that sells the highest number of vehicles in the world. In the world? Mm hmm No idea. I, 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 I want to say the Model 3. Wuling. Nope. Well, the Wuling, Wuling EV is the Wuling is EV, the, the Wuling Mini. EV. Yeah. yeah, that's in China. That's in China. I don't know if that's the world. In China, the best-selling well, EV is the Wuling Mini, and it is a phenomenally inexpensive, affordable vehicle. And you see them it's everywhere. There's so a cult following with those things, you know. Yes, it is very interesting. They they became they they came out with a cabriolet, you know, the one the convertible one. I I saw uh, that. These yeah. cars are phenomenal for city living. Uh, yeah. The range is not very very long. They have like 200 kilometer range, but it's perfect for 
for cities where parking is difficult, where you're not going to be going too far, you you can charge in parking lots and places like that. And and I think that this is going to bring us to 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 talk about city living because our experience my experience is just long distance travel, but that's just part of the green transportation. Um, a lot of people um, live in the cities, but they don't have a vehicle. They use, well, local transportation. And this is something that you've also worked on, Paul. You make some very interesting content about um, self-driving um, buses, some mini buses mm -hmm. yeah. um, that are also electric. This is something that is revolutionizing public transportation in China, self-driving vehicles. Every single public transportation in China is electric. Well, I would say Most 90%. <laughs> 90%. Yeah. And, and that, that is something that is noteworthy um, because whenever you get in a taxi, whenever you get on a bus, whenever you get, they're all electric. They're all pushing to, to meet that zero uh, CO2 emissions goal that, that the government has and that, that the world actually needs. Um, but we, we, in preparation, we also talked about that, what is the, the last mile solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we if we would like to talk about that, Eiko. Uh, That's my Elko, exception. Is let's yeah, uh, Elko. I I'm very curious about what's going on there in Chongqing. Uh, when you mm -hmm. sent when you sent the information about this this last mile thing, these these alley buses. Are that what it, you got to tell us what this is? I don't know what this is, but it sounds very interesting. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of those you know last mile project like. Fernando just mentioned in Chongqing, it is all it is already implementing in Chongqing, and there's a video in this because um, Chongqing is a mountainous city. We talked about this, we mentioned about this a lot. Chongqing has a lot of mountains with those uh, really narrow uh, streets, back streets. Um, it's hard to deliver um, those travelers and and uh, uh, peoples. Um, in all corners of the city. So they apply these alley bus systems. And I have a video and you can spot it in Chongqing. They are already 19 lines in the city right now for... Um, They they look like they almost look like little mimbaucha, you know. They're they're but they're they're, yeah. they're BYDs and they're, are they electric then? Because they're BYDs. Yeah, of course they are all electric. They, of course they are, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And um, um, they kind of like connecting the uh, suburban these residential areas and hospitals and schools and supermarkets and those you know li living facilities all all together wrapped up all together. So I think this is one of the uh, demonstration project um, in in all over the country, I, I guess, of the uh, last mile project. Um, so do you ha have another example or uh, experience to share with us, Fernando? Because this one in Chongqing is already uh, made Chongqing uh, the uh, demonstration city for its achievement. And another thing I want to address is this bus system, uh, in Chongqing's bus system, they already, um, you know, connect with those tr rail transit uh, network and the road transit network. It's, they are already connected. So I think that's really important. They developed together. That's what we are trying to do right now for the green transportation. And uh, I have some information of this you know, of this bus lines. 
in Chongqing, we have like, uh, it, it is said we have more than 800 bus lines in the central area of Chongqing and 270 kilometers of bus priority lanes have been set up in this city. I think this is magnificent because um, in Chongqing, we, most people, we took the rail transit and the bus, bus system to for traveling, for, uh, you know, working and, you know, get back home. So this is really an important example uh, for me to share with you. So back to you, Fernando. And uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I, I think that one thing that, that we we've forgotten to mention, and that is so key to to understanding China's push for green transportation is deliveries. Mm. Every single delivery company uses electric vehicles. So when you buy something online, it is it is uh, sent to your home in an electric tricycle or in an electric bike. Um, when you order some food, is brought to you in an electric bicycle, in an electric e in an electric um, some kind of vehicle. The amount of short distance deliveries, the last point uh, of any kind of delivery system and shipping and distribution. It's all done using electric vehicles in China. It's it's amazing. And the amount of business that these people move on any given day, it, it will just blow your mind. So this new uh, demand for services of delivery, look, when I lived in an apartment uh, up until December, I don't remember the last time I went to a supermarket. Everything was just buy from 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 your phone, and somebody just delivers it to your house, and it's somebody on an e bike e comes and brings it to you. So, uh, it, it, I think it's important to to quantify somehow the effect that these services and that these mm, ways of delivering things um, have in the, the reduction of pollution and I mean, moving the economy in a greener way. I don't know what you guys think about it. Well, it's the application of it is the real difference. I mean, this technology is not new to anybody or anywhere. It's how it's being used in society every day. Like you said, it's in adopted. delivery, Boom. it's adopted, it's it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. And and, and I want to piggyback, uh, you mentioned delivery, I want to mention the electric share bikes. We've talked about mm. this. They're not in every city, but they've, they've started to make a comeback here in my city, here in Zhongshan. But just wake up and go for a walk, go get a cup of coffee in Guangzhou uh, early in the morning. And you see people going about their day, going, you know, on their way to work. And there are these bike lanes along in the middle of the city, these bike lanes and just a constant barrage of these shared electric bikes of people going to work. So if you get off the bus, if you live in another suburb of the city, another area, you get off the train, you get on a shared bike and that takes you the last mile. And those are all electric as well. So it's. It's remarkable the application of these technologies and their use in daily lives. And the marketplace is showing that this not only can be a profitable thing for companies to get involved in, but people love it. They love using these things in their everyday lives. It's a convenience factor. So I want to point that out as well. <laughs> yeah. I think that there, there is an aspect of, of uh, being cool. The new thing out there so ooh, let's, <laughs> let's use the electric mm, yeah well well th th there is that aspect but you remember i mean i, I don't know if it was 20 years ago but they had the little stand up um you wow. know uh you know the little, stand -up, the little stand up scooters right and then everyone wore yeah. a helmet and, and yeah. it was a great a fantastic technology amazing idea and they were saying this is going to change our society and in america everyone said oh they look like nerds and it killed the entire industry. I can't remember the name of the, oh, maybe someone in the comments can put it down. It's just, it's escaping me, but, but it became synonymous with uncool. Whereas here it is very cool, right? Yeah. 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 No, you, yeah. you also see a lot of people in, in uh, these, 
I mean, I, I, I want to say one wheels, but we all know that one wheel is, a, is yeah, an actual yeah. brand. But it's just just monocycles that are electric. Mm. Yeah. People use them as ways of transportation. I mean, if they go from a subway to their home and it's uh, a mile or a mile and a half, they just get on their little thing and zoom, just zoom through the streets, through the sidewalks, and and get home in no time at all. Um, there's uh, the history of the shared bikes. Uh, in my oh, understanding, yeah. <laughs> starts starts in the year two thousand in in Paris with some project called Velo Livre, uh, hmm. Velo Livre, uh, bi free bicycle. But the truth of the matter is that people did not want to cycle from one side of the city to the other. So in China, when they started with this uh, model, it went crazy and it yeah. caused so many issues uh, that it had to be regulated. Nowadays, it's it's very normalized. People are used to them all the time. And yep. the newest thing out there is well, the electric shared bikes. There's also yeah. electric shared cars. Cars, Have you seen yeah. That? yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I've this, seen them on the road here. That, that again, it's another you, you model. You walk up to a car. Sorry, guys, but you walk <laughs> up to a car. You whip up your phone. Deet, deet, you scan the QR code. Use the car. It's electric. It's already charged. And when you don't need it, close it. Click, click. That's it. Pay, and that's it. It's a shared electric vehicle. Obviously, they're not the most luxurious things, but it's it's a transportation solution that is out there and it's available to people here in China. Uh, I, I want to piggyback on that real quick. There is a new model of leasing uh, that uh, Lincoln Co., which is a company of sub-brand of Geely, when they released the 01 in Europe, they released it on this leasing idea to where it's a shared vehicle. So um, it, it's this new concept. You, you, you buy a plan and you pay a monthly payment and you share cars. I mean, this is something that people have tried in the past. I mean, these, these ideas are not new, but, but the application and the adaptation of it here in China is proving to the world that it is viable. It is something that can be done. You can make money from it and everyone can benefit from it. So that's the real magic <laughs> of this market, really. China is the largest laboratory <laughs> for all these yeah. kinds of experiences. Oh, yeah. You want to test something? You want to try something? Here you go. You have 1.4 billion people to try it on. Uh, this kind of uh, markets allow for enormous innovation and and this this pushing the envelope and see what can be done in terms of transportation. Um, I... I cannot uh, stress enough how fast these things change in China. From one year to the next, there's something completely new that's revolutionizing and that that's, has everybody talking about it and everybody's using it and everybody's on it. It's constant innovation, which, well, it, it's what makes it very exciting. And so that's why I actually added the adjective of cool. You want to be using the latest thing. You want to be on the latest... Uh, iteration of uh, electric transportation or green transportation. 100% agree with you, man. 100% agree with you. Dude. <laughs> yeah. And I want to address something on that because you guys talking about the bicycle, share bicycle and uh, the, you know, the electric bicycle. And, you know, in most cities in, in China, um, like Chengdu, like Sichuan, like those uh, city in the Northwest, uh, side of China, they have this really flat areas for you know electric vehicles or in electric bike bike bikes. And uh, but in Chongqing, the really special mountainous topography makes us harder to ride a, a bicycle or motorcycle. Mm -hmm. But we have more trails. We build more trails in Chongqing. Actually, this the government is putting effort on building over 60 main trails, walking trails for citizens to walk on it, to jog on it, to ride a bicycle on it. And this is like one of the examples that I wanted to share with you guys, because I think 
uh, those improvement, those development that you guys mentioned about those share, no matter it's shared electric vehicles or shared electric bicycle, or by uh, you know bicycles, um, they required the uh, facilities, required infrastructure, and that's with what this city is implementing is trying to do. This is one of those cliff trails in Chongqing that won the Driven Design Paris Design Award in 2021. It was built on a cliff and I saw some, you know, uh, disabled people who, you know, use their wheelchair on it and it's really uh, comfortable, really convenient for them. And that really changed and really improved their living uh, quality in the surrounding areas. And this one is really amazing because what, uh, why and why am I want to mention this is because this project from my, my perspective is really magnificent because you know Chongqing is Chongqing was and it is an industrial city, so the green transportation development comes with the whole city renewable uh, strategy. Not only just you know um, take the you know shift the fuel. Uh, consumption the fuel vehicle into the new energy vehicle but also you know um it's uh really an an eco ecology development for citizens here to encourage you to encourage citizens to have a more healthy way of lifestyle mm. let's see those i videos. um i made a video not too long ago on my my channel are we there yet um when i talked about uh xiamen the island of xiamen um mm -hmm. and it's a it's an island that's very peculiar because there are dozens and dozens of like 88 different mountains in that island and well there's transportation for vehicles that's absolutely phenomenal there's more than 60 something tunnels uh, so transportation by car it's very easy and very simple but when you have such a mountainous terrain and and you have so many overpasses and so many elevated ways for cars it becomes very difficult for people to move on foot to actually yeah. cross a whole bunch of uh, flyovers and things like that so what they built over there in 2020 was something called the sea to mountain trail and Xia, oh, yeah. in Xiamen, in, in Fujian province. And it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's 23 kilometers long. It connects, as, it, as the word says, three bodies of water. It goes from one side of the island to the other. And it goes through different mountains, different forests, different neighborhoods. It's, it's extremely interesting for me to see you have the posh, very luxurious, gated communities, but you have the old villages, the old communities where the trail also passes through. So it's very interesting to see people from different walks of life enjoying this path for transportation, for commuting, for entertainment, for relaxation, for exercise. It was absolutely mind-blowing to me that they had done this fast forward one week and i get to fujo and in fujo they have another one <laughs> they have something very similar because again fujo also has a lot of mountains so we see that there the the efforts to to bring not only recreation but ease of transportation for everybody whether you have a car a bike an e-bike or you're just walking um, they're developing infrastructure for for people to do it safely and to do it conveniently um, i was most impressed by by this sea to mountain trail and the one in fuju as well but that uh the video hasn't come out yet <laughs> Thank you, Fernando, for sharing this with us. It's glad to know that there are other cities in, in China that also have the, those really large high difference between hills and slopes for, for as a challenge for engineers and designers to build uh, trails and walk path in the city. Because Chongqing is like, uh, um, in Chongqing, I think the situation for, for us is quite, you know, quite challenging. But 
um, to understand what Fermi what Fernando is introducing us, these examples is to understand what is with what is what we are facing in Chongqing. So um, I think maybe it's for the the maybe it's for the it's end of our show. So um, I'm not gonna uh, you know play this video for you, but you guys can watch our live stream. <laughs> you guys can watch our live stream because yeah, I wanna you know you know wrap wrap that all our conversation today because we had a really nice talk about the China's green transportation. So you guys can watch our live stream and Alex also produced many uh, green transportation and uh, the green infrastructure in Chongqing on our channel. And also I believe um, Fermu and his channel uh, are we there yet and Walk About Rojo, uh, their channel also have more interesting comment uh, content about the green uh, topic in China for you guys. And uh, I, uh, the last thing I want to mention is a vid uh, some videos on YouTube that I watched recently is about the Vancouver, Vancouver city in Canada. This city wants to, you know, reach the goal of to to achieve the one hundred percent renewable energy for the whole city in before twenty thirty. And these videos are telling people how the government is putting the effort on that and and what they are implementing. And what I can see is that the reaction from the locals, from the people there, um, their reactions on this process is way much better than the government um, expected. And I think that's really important because we can see that how important to arouse people's awareness of to be involved in this process, to be involved as an individual in, into this green transportation preparation process. So that's um, what we are interested in, what we are excited about Fernando's uh, life on the van and EV van, and also what um, Paul is doing for his content, for his channel, and for explaining us on um, how important this um, EV future, uh, electric future, green transportation future for all of us. So I think that's it for, for me today. And uh, I don't know if you guys wanted to add something or anything else to um, share. I just want to suggest a topic for a future show. We've been mm -hmm. talking about EVs, electric vehicles. We should address how all this electricity is being generated in the country because yeah. those are projects that are extremely interesting, extremely innovative, very important, all kinds of technologies. That's, that's a video in itself. So yeah. maybe uh, stay tuned for something like that that might be coming up next. And uh, once more, happy Mother's Day to every one of you out there. Uh, mothers watching. Wow. Oh, I want to say the same thing to my mother. Uh, I will call you right after this live stream and wish you a happy <laughs> Mother's Day. Because in America, they're just waking up right now. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I, it, it's been years since I've been home to see my mother. So I just want to give a very, very special happy Mother's Day to a wonderful woman. And you're right. One hour is not enough to tackle this in gigantic topic. And you can break it up but everything that's happening here and around the world is going to be beneficial for everybody in society. And I'm extremely optimistic about what the future is going to be. It's a real privilege to be alive, witnessing, and for Fernando, for Elko and myself, trying to make videos and document this. It's a true blessing in our lives. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thank you. And uh, in our, you know, guys, I already book another topic to, you know, connect with you guys. It's a, it's a digital life in China uh, yeah. and yeah. in the world. And if you guys are interested in, we can, you know, share your insights in this topic because I'm really looking forward to uh, your insights about this. And uh, that's it for today. I'm really grateful for having you guys in our show to present your perspective of the green transportation in China. And I'm really looking for, forward to our next live stream. And please like and share and subscribe to our channels and uh, support us, support our content because it's been really hard. And um, happy Mother's Day.
to every mother, <laughs> especially my mother and uh, to your mothers. And thank you guys. I'll, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Thank All you. Right, take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.